Hello everyone, today I want to talk about immigration for all the healthcare and medical staff. So I would like to open with a background why those skills will be in demand for immigration for most of the countries in the world for quite a long period and will continue to be in high demand. So let's have a look. What happened in the world socially? and economically. So, first of all, what's happening? People are getting sick, more sick. So, yeah, our healthcare industry uh, is very developed, but uh, we can see that uh, a lot more diseases, more diagnoses, and more people around the world getting more sick, and people are uh, living longer, but it doesn't mean the people are healthier. It means that people today get sick with uh, different diseases which were usually for people who are elderly but today we see younger and younger people getting sick with those diseases. As, for example Alzheimer. Alzheimer was something that only for 60 plus and now you can see people who, has, who are 40 years old with Alzheimer. So yeah, our uh, living uh, time extended, we can live until age of 80 in the developed countries, but it doesn't mean that the amount of time that we live is actually healthier. Our uh, quality of living in our body, physical body, is not that good and it's getting worse. So that's why all around the world there, there will be and there is shortage of healthcare staff because more people needing these services more and more and more. The primary healthcare industry is the conventional medicine, which also proven that it's, it's not the best for the best highest level of health. And that's why you see there is no decrease in people. Uh, illness. Chronic disease is getting higher and higher and higher all around the world. And the alternative medicine is put aside and there are some legal action to shut down the alternative medicine which actually gives long-term all-life effects for health and that's the real health. But that's for other uh, um, you know, talks. I'm just talking about facts. So, if you look in at these facts in the process of immigration, so that works well for all the healthcare staff who want to immigrate through that because the system is on their side. Maybe it won't give the best level of health for people who want to get into uh, regular medicine, but if you want to be a part of the system, you can. Uh, kind of, you know, take advantage of the circumstances and immigrate through choosing a profession that is a, in a healthcare industry, the traditional healthcare industry. This is number one. The second system, it's very influential around the world, it's the monetary economic system. As you can see, capitalism around the world is, is it's the main one. So. I won't expand too much, but basically how the system is works, it's when you have one person who is very rich, you have millions of people are getting more poor, because it's a debt-based system. So it means there will be always small amount of people who have the most of the capital, and you'll have most people in the world who have really little of the money around the world. So, what it causes? So it causes a lot of social problems, it causes addiction, it causes frustration, it causes mental health issues, it causes people uh, losing their homes, become more homeless. You already see ar around the western countries and including New Zealand you have so many people who are homeless because 
of the housing prices are going higher and higher higher disproportionately to incomes yeah so even the working people can become homeless it doesn't mean that person who is homeless it doesn't have work people can have some less full-time job and can be homeless there are different circumstances to people that influence on that so at the moment if the system is not going to change yeah there will be no change in the financial system it will uh, create more demand for social workers and support workers and managers of community establishment NGOs and the government will invest more money in it and that's why this one of the profession will be in high demand for immigration so I must that's one of the reason I choose social work and also I predict social work in all the therapy professions will be like longer term in high really high demand because if you talk if you're talking about artificial intelligence uh, they are going to change a lot of occupations in the industry including doctors They're, so doctors are going to are diagnosing doing surgery so robots high probability will replace them so I predict even though Doctors are really important profession at the moment, like medical doctors, but there is high chance in the 10 years, 20 years, artificial intelligence robots will replace them. So it's something that, uh, that worthwhile to consider. And there are in, uh, really interesting reports to read about the future of workforce in the world. Yeah, so, so if we know this is the basics to know about professions and occupations uh, around the world so how is that connected to immigration so as you can see today these professions are really high demand for immigration so worldwide if you look uh, the first profession that is in really high demand as I said it's medical doctors so because medical doctors that are funded by pharmaceutical companies who hold lots of money lots of profits and uh, doctors receive really high salaries compared to the cost of living around the Western world. So, medical doctors, it's a really good profession. And in some countries, especially in New Zealand, it's a really good place to be a doctor. So, what is the process? So, if you study in the right country that has good agreements, for example, if you want to immigrate from Russia or post-Soviet Union countries to New Zealand, you will have a lot of trouble not because you're a worse doctor than someone who studied in the US and moved to New Zealand but barely because the system how they work uh, uh, with patients and uh, and uh, the, the, how they studied and everything it's a little bit different and maybe ma a lot different yeah and there is a there are political mainly political reasons that can affect your immigration so yeah it's possible to immigrate from Russia to be a medical doctor but you will need to do a lot of a comp like a lot of more studies maybe your studies won't be approved there will be lots of issues but eventually it's possible but if you studied your medical degree in Israel or United States or in England the process will be much simpler immigrate to New Zealand because the most and foremost you need to get a license to practice medicine in New Zealand in Canada South Africa doesn't matter where this is the main thing and in each country you have a medical establishment licensing uh, association or a board or some kind of organization that is responsible from the government of uh, supervising the medical establishment and they have simple steps one two three four what to do in order to become a medical doctor a licensed medical doctor Part of that is English and uh, prove your qualification. Some places you will need to do some exams. Some uh, places, some countries you will need to do some basic courses, some more courses. And some some countries you won't be approved. 
Anyway, so, so that's the process. So you go and find this medical establishment to get yourself licensed. After you are licensed, there are will be a lot of recruitment agencies will, that will help you with everything you need. With the visas, with the uh, immigration uh, process, with the uh, f uh, flight tickets, with support for first months uh, of settling, like accommodation. You will receive all that help if you are a medical doctor, because this profession is in high demand. So that's for medical doctors. So the first thing is the licensing and then uh, going through these recruitment companies and also you don't have to use them, you can do it by yourself as well. Like I personally like do most of the things by myself, I like doing the processes of these documents and the application and the deal with the employers myself, I love doing that, I don't want that it will be uh, done for me but you can of course there are plenty of people who can use that they will do it for you yeah but for, most and foremost do your licensing what about other professions so you have uh, uh, nurses psychotherapists psychologists uh, social workers there this all healthcare um, professions the process is the same maybe you won't have Salaries uh, as much as the doctors uh, probably will be four or five times less, but the immigration and demand it's uh, also very high. So if you are a nurse, a lot of questions of nurses how they get uh, to work overseas. So it's the same process, yeah. So you need to go to this registration board of nurses registration board if you're talking about New Zealand so it's midwife registration board of nurses uh, registration board you go into the section of overseas registration and you have steps to do in order to get licensed to be a registered nurse yeah after you are registered nurse you are going to go through all the process of applying for jobs yeah and with that I can help you recruitment agency can help you I can help you to find work There's plenty of jobs in nurses in New Zealand after getting your uh, job offer you have a specialized visa even while there is now COVID-19 uh, restrictions you still as you can get special visas and you can continue your immigration process whoever uh, uh, you want S same thing with the immigration, not only to, to New Zealand, it's to Canada, it's to Singapore, it's to Hong Kong. Get your license. After you get registered and have your license to practice your occupation, psychologist, physiotherapist, nurse, social worker, you can apply for these jobs and uh, eventually also after you get your job, you can apply for a visa. Some places you apply for a visa first, but most important, you get your license and learn the job market this is the most important things the other parts is the visa and stuff it's the easiest part Th that uh, you have plenty of information how to do that and uh, but what I'm saying it's the easiest part so even for social workers social workers can go uh, let's say I want to practice uh, social work in Singapore there is social work registration for Singapore and you can do that. I want to practice social work in Canada, so I want to practice in British Columbia. So British Columbia has a registration board who license in social workers. Just want to say that uh, in, uh, there are some areas in states, so if you get registered in British Columbia, it doesn't mean the registration process will be the same for all Canada. No, it will be only for that region. So some regions will be kind of, if you have a license there, so maybe you'll have another region. But what I'm trying to say, that for each specific region, you have this organization that's responsible of licensing you. Yeah? So that's the, 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 the psychology and the pathway of how to immigrate if you are a healthcare worker. And what I want to say, it's really high demand. Another prediction I want to say, and I want to also uh, affect that 
elderly care will be will need high and higher demand because more people getting um, you know old and less and less children around the world so it means all the elderly care facilities and establishment will need more and more healthcare workers i mean even if you don't have a good degree caregivers how many people from philippines who don't have any uh, education come to new zealand and work for years and years and years on work visas and working in the elderly care sector without barely have uh, knowing english why because the locals don't want to work in this uh, professions this profession is very important somebody needs to take care of the elderly so the benefits you'll get you live in in a good country like new zealand and you are expanding your english maybe meanwhile you can study something and grow from there and eventually you can even be permanent if you you know plan this in the right way yeah so please proceed elderly care you need to uh, be really uh, kind of up to date with what happening in the uh, occupation and uh, work around the world and to see what is the jobs in the high demand so definitely all the occupations in the healthcare sector today are very in high demand so if you need more questions with the process and how to do that and proceed with that and choose a country uh, where uh, is the best to live as a and work as a doctor or social worker or psychotherapist doesn't matter you can talk to me or I can guide you through this process to New Zealand but and to any country the process is the same all right so I wish you all the best uh, and uh, hope that clear a little bit uh, how to immigrate as a healthcare professional wish you all the best